opening statement, yes or no? Mm -mm. Okay, sounds good. Coach Elsie is joined by Ryan Howard and Robin Benton. We'll start with questions for the players. Uh, for both Robin and Ryan, uh, th these past couple games here in the tournament have come against an LSU team that you guys lost to in the regular season, a Tennessee team you lost to in the regular season. Now that you're at full strength and playing so well, just how enjoyable it, and what does it mean to be able to kind of, you know, exercise those demons and, and get some revenge for what happened in the regular season? Um, it means a lot more when you beat them in the tournament. Uh, yeah, we did lose to them. We did, like, we weren't playing to the best of our ability, but... You know, to be playing how we are now and as confident as we are now, it just means more than, you know, when we lost. Like, they can't say they're going to the ship like we can. I agree with my friend Ryan Howard. <laughs> Robin, for you, uh, you see the first shot over here. You see the first shot go in uh, after that. Did you just kind of know it was kind of going to kind of be that night? And also, uh, just to see everybody step up on the bench as well tonight, what, what kind of effort did that take from you guys? Um, you know, Coming off the bench, I just know I got to be a spark for my team. Um, we all know what this means. We, we, um, we know what we're playing for. We're playing to win. Robin, yesterday, Coach Elsie said that you're Showtime, and that's your nickname. Did you feel like you hit Showtime levels tonight? Yeah, when I hit that four three, I was like, ooh, child, things are going to get easier. <laughs> Um, you guys, I think your first 12 points tonight were all three-pointers. Um, lately, you guys have just been getting out to really hot starts. What's kind of been the key to that? Um, we like to shoot, and when we see it going in, we're going to keep shooting it. Um, we are moving the ball really well to find the open person. You know, we're just connecting on all levels. Yeah, my girl Ryan, she's been hot for these past couple of games. I'm just glad I could, you know, heat up a little bit. Just a reminder, if a question is for either player or both, please pick the player you want the question answered by first. Uh, could you guys both just describe the emotions of playing in a rivalry game like that with the crowd, you know, seemingly against you guys tonight? Ryan, if you'll take that first, please. Um, it was a lot like the first time. You know, they had the heavy side of the crowd since we're in Tennessee. Um, but it's great. Like, we know how to step to the challenge. We love when the... You know, fans are going against us. You know, it's not something that we're new to. Um, but we love, you know, doubting people, showing people wrong and just showing what we can do. Go ahead, Robin. I mean, we've been playing in hostile environments all year. Um, we're just stepping up to the challenge and taking it head on. Ryan, you guys led the whole game in the closest Tennessee even came was with one point and you know Ray Burrell had that block and you all called a timeout what was kind of going in that timeout and then you guys came out had 10-2 run started by your and one play and how important was that in the grand scheme of things um we just said we had to lock back in you know we knew that there was that was their run and we had to answer thank you Ryan Robin you ladies are free to go thank you we'll open questions for coach You can stay. You can stay really. Up to you. Yeah, let me ask Okay. Good job. Over here, uh, Kyra. I guess just when you look back at the non-conference you guys played, you, you played in really tough road environments at Indiana, Louisville, in, in conference play as well. How did you think that prepared you guys to succeed in a similar type of environment tonight? Well, first off, um, hats off uh, to. Kelly Jolly Harper, what she has done uh, this year at Tennessee. Um, you know, she has this team playing extremely well um, and proud of my former teammate. And as far as us, yes, we've been in hostile environments all year. Um, you know, our non-conference prepared us uh, for this moment. We are accustomed to playing in hostile environments um, and we stepped up to the challenge today. Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. You touched on it a little bit yesterday, but the team meeting you guys had after you lost, I think, four straight, the South Carolina game being the last. Could you just expand a little bit more on that? Who called the meeting? Where did it happen? Who spoke up specifically? You know, we'll keep that private, but, you know, at that juncture, it was do or die for us. And 
Um, I talked about it yesterday. I had to hold myself accountable along with this staff um, and each individual player. And we knew it, it was either um, we're going home and the season is going to end like this, or we're going to step up to the challenge. Um, I thought all year long we had enough. And even when we first faced adversity, um, you know, I think that brought us together uh, closer as a team because we didn't have anyone else uh, but each other. Um, and it's paying off now. Coach, how key was that fast start? I mean, you put, basically put Tennessee on its heels and they never quite could overcome that, that deficit. And also, do you have anything left in the tank on day four going up, going up against South Carolina? That is a tough stretch. You know, we, need, we knew we needed a, a good start. Um, we needed to come out and be aggressive offensively. Um, but I was more worried about the defensive end. I wanted to make sure that we brought the defensive he heat um, and pursue the basketball. We knew that Tennessee um, is a great rebounding team. You know, I just challenged our players, find a body. We're not going to out jump anyone, get a rebound and run. That was the theme, rebound and run. And that's what we needed to do. Um, day four, you know, that's part of March Madness. I mean, we've played four games in eight days twice. So when you get to the championship game, you leave it out there. There's no saving. You rest after the game is over. So you're there. You give everything that you have. Coach, you talked about it after the Louisville game. Needed more conditioning. Needed to execute down the line. Uh, to see them, you know, take those punches every time Tennessee came tonight and find a way to close the game and execute, it's got to make you feel great. Yes, I, I do feel great, and I'm just so proud um, of this team. The tenacity, the toughness, um, mentally and physically. Um, and you know, when we were taking our hits um, down the stretch, I could see us getting better, even though it wasn't showing up on the scoreboard. We worked a lot on our offensive execution. Um, so when teams make, makes runs, um, I thought we stepped up and answered them. So it's good to see that. Kyrie, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but you know, you're facing your former teammate in the SEC tournament semifinal. What does it mean to see you kind of both finding the success and meet in a game like this? <laughs> I love Kelly. You know, we're teammates. We're Lady Vol sisters uh, for life. A lot of respect for her. Obviously, I have a lot of love for the Tennessee program um, and what Coach Summit has built um, and the sisterhood that she has built. Um, you know, we were kind of joking before the game when we gave each other a hug and said, uh, we wish we weren't playing each other so we could cheer each other on. But, you know, we're both competitors. Um, and when we're not playing each other, we want the best for each other. Kyra, to that end, last year, Joni and Dawn made history as the first black coaches to, to be in this game. Now you get to follow this up and be the second one against Dawn. What does that mean uh, for you personally and for getting Kentucky to this point? You know, so proud just to help uh, get Kentucky back to the championship game. Um, and as far as making history, you know, that's amazing. Representation uh, matters. You know, Coach Staley has been a voice for women's basketball, women and women of color. Um, you know, I grew up um, respecting and idolizing uh, Coach Staley, but tomorrow it's going to be two coaches, competitors, um, and I'm glad people get to look on TV and see women of color in leadership roles. It matters. Elsie, the South Carolina game was a loss in the regular season, of course, but you mentioned that that's when you first started seeing your team really come together despite that loss. What else do you remember from that game, and what do you expect out of tomorrow's matchup? Well, tennis, or South Carolina is a tough team. Obviously, they're the number one team in the country for a reason. Um, and what I remember is uh, the offensive rebounds and them pounding the ball in the post. We'll have our hands full, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's 40 minutes and bring your best. Um, and that's all we can do. And we're going to come and compete um, and do what we do best. This is Ryan Howard's last season with the program. And given you know, where you guys were midway through the conference schedule, what does it mean to see her find the success at the end of this season? You know, I get emotional thinking about it. Um, you know, she started the season um, really stressed out and pressure filled and I thought she played that way um, and she and I met and I just told her I was like what you have done for women's basketball what you have done for Kentucky um, 
if you don't do another thing, your accolades speak for themselves. Um, and I knew in the back of my mind what the end game was, but wanted to free her along with this staff to let her have fun, enjoy her senior year, um, because these are memories that she, in time, that she will never get back. So it's good to see her having success, but also having fun. That's all we have. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.